On this episode, I'm interviewing Grace Jo, who is a North Korean defector. She actually now lives in the U.S. after an incredible escape from North Korea. This is just an incredible interview. It's heart-wrenching, and all the miracles that had to take place for them to get out of North Korea. It's unbelievable some of the stories you're going to hear, the loss in her family, the starvation, all of the difficulties, and the incredible human rights violations that took place in North Korea and are still happening today. You're going to hear about how she was exiled from her village, forced to travel without food, had dangerous journeys in and out of the country. She was detained in China, in labor camps, and going through a very brutal process of escape. And she also tells us about the surprising role that the Chinese government plays in these human rights violations and how they work together with North Korea. But there is hope. Many in North Korea are now seeing that there is life outside North Korea. They're losing trust in their government and they're not turning in their neighbors like they used to. And you're going to hear about why that is the case. And there are many who are believing a new Korea will be coming with the reunification of North and South Korea. You'll also hear how a minister helped them escape North Korea and the surprising way that he kept the governments of China and North Korea from catching him while he did that. You're not going to want to miss this episode, so let's get into it right now. This is Your Faith at Work, work. the show that helps you get your faith out of the church and into the world. God is on the move right now in the marketplace and culture through people just like you. You were created for influence and impact. Let's take your faith to the next level. Learn more at RyanSHoward.com. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ryan S. Howard. Hello and welcome to Your Faith at Work. I'm Ryan Howard and I've got a very special guest with me today. Grace Jo is with me, and she is a North Korean defector. She was born in North Korea and escaped and, uh, well, is now living in the United States today. And we're going to talk about some, uh, well, her life in North Korea, and uh, we're going to learn about what she's up to today. So, Grace, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me here. It's my pleasure, and um, I'm very blessed and uh, grateful to be able to uh, represent my family and share uh, our experience to the audience. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I mean, we, we've got, um, I mean, there's so much we can cover, but we really want to make sure we give uh, a good understanding of the reality for families in North Korea. So I think the best way to do that is to hear your story. So uh, if you want to just give us, uh, start to take us through that. Sure. Um, I was born in 1991, and uh, according to my mother, uh, my regime had a big change in 1994, which was Kim Il-sung passed away, and then Kim Jong-il took uh, power, and then he became the uh, great leader of North Korea. And since 1994, our government uh, did not uh, provide uh, rations to the uh, population. So a lot of people, they um, they were shocked because they were so used to with receiving the supports from the government time to time. And they were, uh, everybody were relying on the uh, rations for their living. Um, that's why they were trusting their government more and uh, rely on 100%. But suddenly all those supports kind of cut out. Um, in the beginning, they they started to cut from, uh, you know, uh, civilians uh, who don't have any government connections. And then later on, all those rations was not enough. So he slowly cut down. Like in the beginning, they were giving like every year, give like a few months. But later it stopped like, oh, a few times a year. And later on, it just completely stopped. So during those time, we call it Great Famine. And uh, a lot of disease going on and a lot of um, hunger and starvation and death. Um, and a lot of people, they start to steal each other. And people just be- became very, um, they, they lost, you know, their living um, uh, path. So they were trying to, uh, like, figure out 
how they can survive by themselves. So since then, a lot of uh, uh, business, like a trade, uh, street market, all those things kind of developed since then. Um, but my family uh, was one of the families from. 20,000 or 30,000 North Korean defectors families who were passed away during the famine and my almost all the family members were part of it there um, so my uh, grandmother and my two younger brother passed away by starvation wow. and uh, my father and when he find out that we were hungry and uh, they could not find any other way to find out like the food in North Korea, he decided to go to China to find his uh, distant relatives to get help. And he went to China for three times, and the third time he got trouble, of course. And he got punished by our government because he went to China and brought a few bags of rice. So um, that's a short introduction. In <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so your father... Uh desperate to feed his family, um, goes to China to get some food because the government has stopped ra giving rations to people um, and gets comes back and, and he gets caught with the rice or what, what happened? Uh, um, well, uh, if I go back a little bit, so my father, he tried to start a business with whatever we had. Um, he tried to exchange from different grains to different material and sell in the market and exchange with the different food, but that didn't work out. Um, and my mom, she also made like a little white buns at home, steam it and sell in the village and trying mm -hmm. to get the food, but that didn't work out. And my mom also, she made like a, um, uh, uh, like the gloves uh, and the men hats and the jackets she was making at home by hand mm -hmm. and we didn't have electricity so I remember when I was like five and a half or six years we had to hold the torch um, and then whole night and in the morning when we wake up with the bright daylight we all had a you know like a little dark rash under our nose so we were like oh you look like a Japanese you know general or something yeah. And then we were pointing each other and laughing each other. So those were our days. Wow. But um, those uh, ideas, whatever they tried to figure out, none of them worked out. And I remember we were starving more than 10 days without any food. And we were just drinking cold water from the nearby river. Um, and I also remember I was eating like six newborn mice founded by my mother uh, in the spring season. She found it on the front yard when she tried to move the little stone um, for the farming prep. Mm -hmm. uh, but she uh, found out and my grandmother suggests that uh, that could be the good nutrition food mm -hmm. for uh, young children. So they boiled in the stone pot and they um, picked me as one of the candidates, mm -hmm. and I was the luckiest one. So um, I was able to drink the uh, mice soup, and that was a first memory of my, uh, my uh, I think that was bef right before six years old. So I think that was my first memory about the mice soup. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And I can still remember it because little mice, it, it had a little dark round eyes and you were staring at me um, right before I was eating and my father he was alive at the time and everybody were uh, alive at the time and my father yelled at mom like oh you're probably very scared why don't you just smash it with a spoon that's why she touched it and actually it just became uh, uh, just white uh, gray color soup mm -hmm. instead of you know the yeah. bodies were uh, flowing <laughs> around <laughs> wow. so yeah that's how um, I started to eat um, so all those difficulties continued and in 1997 my father decided to go because escaping is kind of against the policy and against the rules mm -hmm. and um, people might consider our family as the uh, betrayer of the country yeah. Um, so it was not the easy choice for my father to do that, but there's no choice. We also killed one of the farm-operated uh, 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 
cow, mm -hmm. and in North Korean law, if you kill one cow, uh, you consider as killing one person, so you will persecute it. Because wow. all those cows and ox, they, they are carrying all those difficult farming works, so mm -hmm. they are uh, treated way better than people. Wow. Um, but there's no choice, so he killed the one, and we ate that whole two months. Like every day, we were uh, distributed with a small amount of meat, mm -hmm. uh, without any salt or any rice. We just wow. had meat wow. for two months. Um, we also boiled the bones until mm -hmm. the bone disappears. Uh, make like a jelly or soup. Mm -hmm. We drank every yeah. parts of the, uh, the that cow. Mm -hmm. But after that. Even we couldn't find any source to survive. So my father went to China, um, brought Chinese rice and Chinese um, products to exchange. Um, also, the, we call it gochujang and denjang. It's like a bean paste for mm -hmm. the Koreans. Um, those are the main source for the salt uh, mm -hmm. for us. Um, but first two times it was successful, but the third time, uh, she got he got in trouble. Uh, one of the neighbor in the village they found out. Uh, my father was away for a few months and then come back, and then we were be able to use the food. Mm -hmm. So they kind of suspicious and focusing and tracking my father, and then he they found out my father was escaped to China. So uh, he got caught on the street and he never returned. About a year later, the government. Um, just sent us a letter and read in front of the uh, door. They didn't even sit and say hi. They just say, I came from the government. I'm delivering the message. And then they just read the short sentences like, uh, uh, Hu and Hu um, tried to escape from the train toward to the Chinese China side, and our officer find out and shot him to death. And then this is his uh, party's uh, member ID, and this is the final uh, the sentence, and then all this, this is the message. And then he just left. And my mom, she was pregnant at the time, and he, I think she was eight months uh, pregnancy. And the next morning she delivered in the, uh, in the down, and my grandmother helped her to deliver the baby. And I remember I was sitting, and the baby, after she was, he, was, he was born, of course, there's water and blood, so the baby was just asleep, slept, mm -hmm. and then came to my my uh, feet area. It was shocking because it was like 4.30 or 5 a.m. in the morning, and mm -hmm. we didn't have light. Oh um, so it was very dark, wow. and I, I can hear all those yelling and sounds. Um, so it was very uh, unforgettable memory in my life. Um, and my brother, he was afraid, so, and he was about four and a half years old. Mm -hmm. He was right next to me, and he started to cry. And um, my grandmother, he, she cut the, uh, I don't know. The cord? Yeah, the cord yeah. Um, with a scissor, like a really mm -hmm. gigantic scissor. We usually cut everything in the house. Yeah. Um, she just, uh, um, uh, like, it's, Temporarily sanitized it with a um, fire, like a mm -hmm. wood fire, and then she cut it. And, and miracle, he was alive uh, for two months. And after she delivered the baby, a week later, she found out my oldest sister got missing because the day we had a new baby, my oldest sister came back from the long trip, but she didn't find any food. And when she came into the house, she's just a uh, so um, sad that our family don't have any food mm -hmm. uh, to support two, two lives, which is mom is weak and the newborn baby. So she thought about it, and then she left home that that day without the rest and told my sister, Esther, I uh, said, like, Esther, you have to take care of mom and brother and sisters. I will live to, I will walk to city again and try to ask people for help us. Um, the latest I will return by midnight tonight or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But it's been a week past and nobody, no news. So my mom worried so much, so she left the home. And she let my grandmother and my sister Esther to take care of the newborn baby. Of course, my mom, she has to, you know, relying on the oldest daughter more than the newborn baby. She She... 
she knew it might be very difficult for us to take care of the newborn baby, but she also needed to find, mm-hmm. she was so desperate to look for her oldest daughter. So the whole trip of researching took two months. So she walked like multiple times um, to the city. Like one way was taking whole 24 hours. So she walked down, searched the whole village, asked the neighbors, asked our distant relatives, no news, so came back home. And then in our village, heard that, oh, uh, several weeks, uh, several days ago, I saw her at someone's house. And then my mom went to that house and asked certain, certain thing and find out she probably went to China. So she also went to China and searched the whole process. So it took two months. After she came back with milk powder and rice, um, some other grain powders with her uh, about two months later, um, she found out in the house there's no more baby. Unfortunately, right before she returned, I think three days before she returned, the baby died. Uh, But during those two months, my sister Esther, she was carrying baby, walked to the village, asking all those baby moms to uh, rent some milk. For the few weeks, yes, they those ladies, they have kids, so they understand the situation, so they're trying to share the milk. But their life is also difficult. So moms, they don't have enough milk. Mm-hmm. So um, the fathers, they try to stop my sister to approach to them. Um, so for the uh, week or two, it was kind of knocking everyone's door and trying to get the milk or rice or something to uh, help baby uh, food. But sometimes we also w- uh, went to uh, the meal work. Was it called the meal work? In the, in the countryside, we put the grain mm-hmm. with the skin and then trying yeah. to peel the skin. Mm-hmm. So when we went to the meal work house, there's a leftover powder and corn skins around mm-hmm. it. Then we will collect those soft parts and then make it more soft mm-hmm. and then bring it to our house and then make a porridge and give to the baby. Um, yeah, the whole process was very uh, difficult, but... My sister uh, was not found. My mom came back. The youngest boy was not there anymore. And my mom got caught by the government again because she was missing for two months and came back and the villagers think it's very suspicious. So the government officials in the village, they came with the block and dragged my mom's hair. They took away everything she brought from China. It was the chaos day. Um, And after she captured, she was interviewed, got beaten. So like midnight that day, she returned with whole blood covered on her face. And then we um, ran to the mountain and we were hiding for three days. But at the time she got hit with a wood block on her head. So she had a skull uh, fracture, and then uh, she wow. bleeded so much. But of course, we couldn't go anywhere for the treatment, and we were hiding in the bush, and it was raining. So after the second day and on third day, she, my mom was started to lose her conscience. So my sister found out that, and then uh, she suggested maybe mom will die on the mountain, so we have to go back home since my grandmother was home with my younger brother, so she might have something to treat her with. So we, both of us carried my mom and went back home, and my, mom, my grandmother realized it's very severe wound, so we tried to clean with the water, but of course we don't have salt, we don't have any disinfect medicine, so it, it, we just didn't clean the outside. And then she started to lose her conscience, and she was sick and not was not able to move at all. Um, and then, of course, during around the evening, they found that my mom came back home. So officials came back again, but they already found out that my mom lost the conscience. She was not able to walk. So they said, well, when she get better, let her come to our office again. And then they left. Um, so during all these days, uh, my sister was the only one who has energy to carry all those things. So she was uh, about 10 years old at the time. So my mom was sick, and she was sick about two months. 
And during that time, my grandmother was old, and we were weak,、um, and she has to take care of the younger children. And my sister, she went to the mountain, and it was luckily it was summertime, so she collected the wild vegetables. Grandmother will steam it. And then put in the little bucket, and she will carry it to the market and sell it and exchange some food.、Um, so that's how ten years old girl become the breadwinner in the family.、Um, wow! And I also I remember once I went to a little farther city market with her. So we took、um, a truck. And I was almost to fall down from the truck、uh, because someone just kicked my chest、uh, when I was almost on top. So I was six years old. So it was very small, and I was holding so tight.、Um, and they were putting like a wood block on the truck, and everybody sitting on top of it.、Um, But luckily, someone just grabbed my hair and holded me, <laughs> so so、wow. I got survived. But、um, so each trip, it was very dangerous because we had to get onto the car. Otherwise, we have to walk like two days or three days to reach the、yeah. market. Wow.、Um, But although we tried so many hard ways, we still could not find any good food, nutritious food. So my grandmother.、Um, In June 1998, so at the time my father was gone, my older sister is gone, my mom was very sick because of torture, and my sister was the only breadwinner, and my youngest brother is already passed away. So the family condition was really bad, and my grandmother she got weak and weak.、Uh, she also got injured on her left hand. Um, I know. I don't know. There's a plant we collect in Korea, and we can make that with、uh, rice, and it can be the rice cake or something. So she was trying to collect that to make some food for us, and that was about June time, and it was toxic. And when she trying to chop the wood, there's a piece of a wood、uh, like harm her hand, and she had a、um, existing wound, and then she tried to collect the plant, so the toxic material、wow. went into the wood. And about three days, that skull got like a blister, like a a, a really big, gigantic、uh, water blister, like a kind of swallow. And about a week later, that blister reached her arm. Um, and then,、uh, a, like on the fifth day, we trying to release the water inside of the blister. So we kind of touched it, and the whole thing was like, like、uh, broken.、Mm-hmm. And then we found out inside of the skin, it was very yellow, and like all those little water bubbles、mm-hmm. keep coming up. So basically,、uh, her arm start to rot, rotten. But we didn't have any salt to disinfect it, or there's nothing.、Mm-hmm. And my grandmother was starved for days. So、um, on the second week,、um, she started to yelling my sister's name, like Esther, Esther. There's a burning potato, and the rice are burning. But of course, we didn't have adults in the family. So, well, in short time, so many things happened at the time. So it was very、uh, traumatic for my mom. But so. The whole house was cold, and we didn't have burned the woods or make fire for a week.、Um, so we first time we were very confused since my sister was ten, so we we didn't understand why she was saying that. And then after、uh, several times she said that and mentioned that,、uh, we we realized that oh she's not. Um, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was.、Um, wow. so, she can see something else that's not happening.、Um, and then few days later, she passed away. Well, my family before all these incidents happened, it, everybody in the village were very respecting my grandmother. And my father was the hard worker in the family. Since he was、uh, 11 years old, he was raised by one of the、um, 
the one of the government official in the Musan area mm -hmm. as the stepson. So he worked so hard. So everyone in my father's age, they knew my father's name because he he knows how to fix things and um, for for working parts, nobody can really defend him. So all village people were respecting our family. But after that, you know, my father's incident happened, everybody turning their back from us. Everybody were pointing our family. And after my grandmother passed away, um, only three gentlemen from the village came to our house and checking in what's happening because we were crying all morning. And then they realized my, my grandmother passed away. So there's no coffin or no material. So we, my mom barely moved at the time and uh, kind of instructing my sister how to do it and how to help her to uh, clean my um, grandmother's body. And um, the saddest part is in Korean culture, when people passed away, it's good to put uh, one scoop of rice in their mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so my sister went to village and asking that one scoop of rice. Wow. But everybody refused. Wow. So unfortunately, we were not able to put the rice in her mouth. Instead, we put the um, cotton from her uh, blanket. Um, we picked some uh, white and clean cotton and put in her mouth and ears. And then she wrapped with the blanket and plastic. Sorry. That's a... Don't take your time. Yeah, so I was uh, very um, little. And I had to stay with my brother at the time, so I didn't go with uh, my sister and my mom to the mountain to bury my grandmother. Uh, but with all these three gentlemen's help, um, they were able to find some, uh, like a little cart. And then uh, my grandmother was on there, and my mom and my sister was holding each other and trying to follow that car to the mountain. And I heard they found a nearby mountain around our village. And, um, and my grandmother's last wish was to bury her on top of the mountain because she wanted to see us to walk out from the village. Yeah, so after my grandmother passed away, um, about a few days later, there's all those officials from the village came to our house and warned my mother and said, um, you guys have to vote for Kim Jong-il in the city instead of in the countryside because we have been voting for him every year um, in that village when my grandmother was alive. So it had no problem when we vote in the village. But that year, they're asking to leave that village, go back to our original city where we were originally came from, and let us vote in that city area, which means we already moved from there for several years ago, and we don't have a home there. We have nothing in the city. So basically, they are trying to kick us out from the village. Mm -hmm. Um, so my mom was very upset and angry at the time and also begging them, like, we, the winter is coming up mm -hmm. and my kids don't have any food to eat and we don't have shoes or clothes. Where we will go if we leave our home? So please don't let us go. And then when, when we crying and beg them, they just said, we will give you 15 days. And if in 15 days you don't leave, then we will burn your house. <sighs> So after my mom heard of that, um, we were sitting inside of the house and we, we could hear that too. And after that, my mom was completely disappointed about our government. And um, she realized that that's not the place we can live um, anymore. So I guess that's the turning point, my mom, to decide to leave our country forever. Um, and one day, which is on my birthday, uh, Actually, one day before my birthday, we locked the door 
and stand in front of our house watching the sky. And my mom uh, told us that we are going to leave this house. And wherever you go, remember your home country is North Korea. And wherever or whatever you become, you have to remember your origin. Um, wow. <laughs> so after that, we took about three days, and um, we walked uh, like we passed like mountain unpaved roads. Uh, the light was only the moonlight uh, we can follow, and we don't have any direction. Um, so we just walked on one direction, like we. Uh, the my mom think that's the China side, so we were keep walking that side. And during daytime, we have to hide in the bush when we find out someone is walking by. And then finally, we reached to the Tuma River, um, the border between North Korea and China. Yeah. So my mom she carried me on her backpack. So. Uh, I was very little at the time, mm -hmm. and I was able to sit inside of the backpack, and she was holding my sister on the left side, and my sister was holding the walking cane, like mm -hmm. a one wood stick. And my sister, she was really skinny at the time. Now she's very big. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the time, she was really tiny and skinny. It's only bone on her body with the skin. So she was keep flowing uh, with the water wave. Mm -hmm. um, so we struggled about like 40 minutes when we crossed the river. Oh, wow. um, because the water wave was a little strong in the river and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the water level reached my mom's hip and my sister's chest. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for her to walk in the water. And there's a gigantic stone in front of us and it was very slippery with mm -hmm. the strong wave. So, Crossing that stone was kind of struggling wow. like 20 minutes there. And after we crossed the river, we also found out those soldiers who were guarding the border, they were catching the fish. Um, and there's a mountain we crossed, and there's a curve in the river. And they, after we crossed to China side, my sister found out, Mom, there's a soldier. So we just hide it in the bush, and then we observed it, and two soldiers were turning that curve and trying to catch the fish. So even we delayed about like 10 minutes or so, we, we all got caught um, at that moment. Then we probably all died. Wow. So it was a miracle moment. I think God protected us from there. Um, because the, the moment when we leave that house, my mom um, st stand in front of our house door, um, she she prayed. She didn't know there's a God existed, but she prayed it to you know to the sky. Said like, if there's someone um, there, please protect our journey. I think uh, God heard us yeah. and uh, protected us from all those dangerous moments. Mm -hmm. um, and after we came to China, um, we got help from. Uh, neighbors and we also went to the distant relatives house but they refused to, to help us anymore um, so we were walking uh, the street from the border area to different city so that was a long few days journey but when my mom holding two child and walking those mountain road one day the police car just was passing by and when they passed a little bit, they tried to stop and go, stop and go for multiple times, and then they left. So I guess they already realized we came from North Korea. Mm -hmm. So they were thinking, oh, should we ca catch them or no? Like, they were, yeah. like, deciding wow. at that Hest moment. <laughs> yeah, hesitating. Wow. So we were so scared, and we were holding hands. And my mom said, like, don't look at them. Just keep walking. Don't look at them. Just keep walking. So we were walking, um, and luckily they just left. They didn't catch us. And then we uh, were able to find... Uh, some help in China, but before then we were hiding someone's the backyard. Um, I think it was a, um, a little wood house with a lot of um, dried rice. Uh, I think that was for the uh, their animal food or something, but we were hiding under it. And we also were sleeping someone else's the backyard for a day or so. 
the most difficult part at the time when I felt it was mosquitoes during summertime, and the mosquitoes keep biting us, and it's so hard to sleep at night. And during daytime, we have to walk, so it was very difficult journey in the beginning. But somehow we managed to stay in China、uh, for ten years. But during those ten years, we had to, you know, repatriate a few times. Uh, you, you had to repatriate. You went back to North Korea. Yes, yes. So personally,、government. yeah, personally, I sent it back twice. But、wow. my mom and my sister they repatriated for four times. So each time when I hear it, it was very、um, uh, it's unspeakable experience. So then they're repatriated, which means、uh, it's not like a welcome home.、Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> I wish.、Uh, but how? Those steps works is、uh, when we got caught in China, they will ask you questions and identify whether you came from North Korea or no. If of course, if we cannot show them the legal ID, then they will consider as、uh, North Korean people.、Mm-hmm. And Chinese、mm-hmm. government never、um, uh, allowing us to call as a refugee, so、uh, we were not considered as legal refugees in China. So.、Um, We were detained first, and then sent it to the border area. And after a few days later, we will take a bus and then cross the border to North Korea side. And of course, that experience is just intimidating and just hold these mountain sides of fear just、mm-hmm. come to us with the wind. And then the smell, the air of North Korea is also different.、Mm-hmm. I realized each time I go,、mm-hmm. and when I come down from the bus. The feeling and the smell—it's totally different than、wow. China.、Um, and those officials from Boibu, which is intelligence agency or something, they will come first to pick up us and then take us to the detention center.、Um, but just the first moment when when they speak to us, those are saying like, from this moment, you have to think you are not human being. You have to obey our words hundred percent, and you have to、uh, watch like forty degree, forty five degree from the ground to the top. So we only able to see their feet, not able to see see、Seriously? their body. Yes.、Wow. So we always walking like this, and when we answer, we we will not able to see their face. So even though we stay there about a month or so, we never saw their faces. So we don't remember who are our guards.、Um, and then、uh, from that moment, they're asking, "Hundred percent, you have to obey our words. If you fail to do so, you will get punished." So of course, we are afraid we will listen whatever they ask to do so. So when we get into the prison cell. Um, they will start to interview us and trying to figure out whether it's regular case or political case. They will sort him out. Could you explain the difference、uh, between a regular case and a political case? Sure. The regular case means、um, during the Great Famine, everybody tried to cross the river to China and find food,、mm-hmm. and they leave. They hiding in the countryside and they just survive there.、Mm-hmm. So they don't meet any foreigners. They don't go to church for the help,、um, so they don't get any gospel messages,、um, and they don't watch the television news or anything. So then those people just cross the river, find the food, work so hard in the countryside.、Mm-hmm. They don't have any world news. Then they consider as regular refugee、no、case. No world news. Right, <laughs> right. And then the political case means either you met foreigners, went to church. Heard about the gospel,、um, or、uh, when you, if you had any experience with foreigners in, except Chinese citizen,、mm-hmm. then you are considered as political case, which means you heard some news about against the、um, Juche ideology.、Mm-hmm. The Juche ide- ideology. Yeah, yeah, yeah Juche、mm-hmm. ideology. So then those categories we will consider as political case. So they will go through many different type of interviews,、um, like psychological tests,、mm-hmm. um, and of course physical、uh, abuse and all those stuff going on in that area. And once you, they decide, oh, this is regular case, then we will like. 
we survived. Yeah. But of course, the next step is like a labor camp for like eight months or a year or minimum is six months.、Mm -hmm. And after we went through that, we were released. But after release for at least six months to eight months, someone will watching us all the time. So we have to be very careful. And my mom was very smart at the time, so she was able to pass all these、mm -hmm. steps. And after we released. We tried to well. We have to show them that we tried to live in North Korea. Yeah. So、um, she, she really managed that those well. But after we released, of course, we don't have any home. Nobody welcomes us,、um, and nobody willing to accept us in North Korea. Of course, so we have to escape. And the funny thing is, all these North Korean people, when they got caught. When they serve the labor, the government purpose is since you did something wrong and against the government, you have to get trained and educated again for you to resettle in North Korea and obey the government. But the thing is, all these brutal treatments is so so strong. All these North Korean people in our heart keep reminding us that if I go up, if I go up from this center. I will escape again.、Mm -hmm. No matter what happens,、yeah. I will not live in this country.、Yeah. So, I don't know that their their、um, system is very wrong in that sense.、Yeah. Um, so we always keep in like we want to escape. We want to escape. So <clears throat> even though North Korean people they never、um, captured and first time captured and going through that process. They also have that mind. Oh my God! I never knew my country is this brutal.、Mm -hmm. If this is my country, I will not live in my country anymore. I will escape again.、Wow. So that's why defectors they are keep defecting、yeah. our yeah our country repeatedly. I also saw one lady. She got cut eleven times, and she came in with her son. She was thirty five years old, but she didn't have any teeth, and only one teeth in the front left, and that was really wrong teeth.、Um, we thought she was like sixty years old. Wow! But she said she was only thirty five years old. That was a shocking moment,、wow. and she told us that, "Well, this is my eleventh time." I'm, How can you manage eleven times?、Yeah. It was a very shocking moment, but somehow. All these dead women, we try to escape again and again.、Um, that's、wow. the reality. So you're and now you. So you back to China, or back to North Korea, back to China. What happened? I mean, how did you get to the the U.S.? I mean, you. I know there was somebody involved in helping you.、Um, what what happened after that? Uh, yes, so that's a miracle miracle that I would like to share as well. So about、uh, in 2004, we came back to North Korea again from North Korea, and we asked,、uh, we found、um, Chinese Korean Chinese、uh, pastors.、Um, at the time, we were、uh, protected by them, and we were staying in one of pastors' house in Shenyang area. And one day, he told us that oh, there's a one. Korean American pastor is gonna visit us,、um, and he is helping a lot of North Koreans. So maybe when you meet him, maybe ask him some help.、Mm -hmm. Maybe he can help you guys.、Mm -hmm. So we were excited, and he finally came, and he was sitting in front of me, and I just realized, oh, I met him before when I was young. So when I was ten、uh, years old, I went to the、um, uh, young Chinese. A Korean Chinese pastor who was running the safe house for North Korean defector children. So I stayed about a year or two with that family, and、uh, I also、uh, lived with a, sometimes six children, sometimes ten children in one apartment,、mm -hmm. and we were hiding in that apartment and studying Bible. Wow! So that pastor actually visited us when we were in that shelter. Um, and they, he gave us the M、M&M、and M chocolates at the time. So、mm -hmm. I remember he gave us the chocolates, and、uh, he was very sweet. And、um, that was about three years past.、Mm -hmm. So that pastor also realized, well, I think I met you somewhere.、Mm -hmm. 
were you the kid from that safe house? So I told him yes, and then wow. we kind of met again. Mm-hmm. And from that year, he so he sent our family with uh, to Qingdao area to meet with the other group of North Koreans, mm-hmm. and we rented an apartment, of course, by help of Chinese citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were hiding in that apartment and making the um, little cross or um, handmade uh, embroidery mm-hmm. materials for wall design. Play, so we were making that in the house all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he will collect it when he come back to China mm-hmm. and give us the money mm-hmm. to pay the rent and food stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the time we thought, oh, he will collect our handmade stuff and he will sell that in America and he can make some money. Mm-hmm. So we thought he's very rich guy, but. Um, uh, in, from 2004 to 2005, that took a whole year. And one day, he came with the one Korean newspaper to our apartment when he visited us. And each time when he visited us, he always gave us the chocolate yeah. with um, uh, almond inside. Yeah. Yeah. And he, but he only gave us like two pieces per person. <laughs> um, but chocolate moksanim is um, uh, sharing one newspaper and telling us there is one good news. Uh, and George W. Bush, he signed the North Korean Human Rights Act in 2004. Mm-hmm. So a lot of Korean community, they made the news and say North Korean refugees are able to come to America. So there's a door open for us in America for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, so Pastor explained that, well, you have a chance to go to America now uh, instead of South Korea, but we don't know when and how. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to wait or are you going to go to South Korea? Because once you go to South Korea and you want to go to America, that's impossible. Yeah. So my mother thought about it and she decided to come to America instead of go to South Korea. So um, the purpose he visits China each time is trying to arrange the groups and then uh, connect with the brokers and then bring them to the third country and go to South Korea. Mm-hmm. So the moment when we reading the newspaper, he was trying to gather the first group and send them to South Korea mm-hmm. at the time. So we have to decide at that moment. Yeah. And thankfully, my mom changed her decision and we decided to stay in China mm-hmm. until we are able to come to America. Wow. So um, since we decided to stay, we don't have anything to do. So we decided to help him to rescue other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so my sister was able to speak Chinese and I can translate for my mom. So we made a plan. And then the broker fee was super expensive at the time. And sh- he had so many people need to rescue and he didn't have money enough. And he also got uh, um, one big envelope from his son's salary. So he didn't leave any money for his son family. He took a hold of that money. And then he answered uh, uh, his son's phone call in front of us say, I'm sorry, I took your money. No, really? Wow. <laughs> so he was also using his own family's um, money, but it was not enough. Mm-hmm. So he was crying and said, I have so many people to need to rescue, but I only have this much money. I don't know how to do. And then when we hear that, we kind of suggest like, well, let us help you. Um, how about we make this plan? So my sister wanted to go to Inner Mongolia with the first two group um, and then meet with the broker, get all the instruction. And then my sister will stay there in the hotel we will send my mom and I will send the second group to her and she will share that instruction exactly Mm -hmm. same to the next group so then we can save the broker fee for the future group Mm -hmm. of people so we can save some money so pastor said well that's good idea let's do it so we did that but unfortunately pastor was so popular among the Chinese police people because they knew Pastor was helping North Korean people, mm-hmm. but there's no way to catch him. And Pastor was very smart, so he didn't come to China directly from America. So mm-hmm. he always went to Japan and go to China, or South Korea to really? China, Russia to China. Wow. So they were all waiting for the international flight, 
instead of domestic.、Uh. So he was using the domestic <laughs> flights all the time. So、wow. the police didn't catch him for three years. So all the invest. Well, when I find out after we got caught, we found out they were doing investigation for three years with his photo. Wow.、Um, but that was the miracle moments. But unfortunately, in two thousand five. We all got caught because one of the North Korean lady actually he worked for both North Korean government and Chinese government,、mm-hmm. so she, she was reporting to the Chinese government、mm-hmm. with all the, our plans. So in three places we got caught all same day. So Inner Mongolia, she got caught in the hotel,、mm-hmm. and when we find out、uh, through the phone call, my sister said, "My mom, I got caught." Mm. And then the phone was, you know, disconnected, and we came back to our apartment, trying to call the pastor and telling him that、mm-hmm. my sister got caught and we needed help. But on the way, we find the phone station. We got caught in under the apartment hallway.、Mm-hmm. Someone just grabbed our neck、mm-hmm. and just, you know, pushed to the wall, and then we realized, oh my God, that's the last moment.、Mm-hmm. So we got searched, and some people in our apartment they were arresting, and they all got caught. And、um, of course, one lady tried to suicide, so she caught both over her, her arm,、um, uh, hand,、mm-hmm. and her throat. So it、Your、was wrist, like yeah. bleeding.、Um, yeah. So the police people they have to take her to the urgent care, and so many things happened that、wow. day. Yeah, but that's the. Reason why、uh, we stayed for 13 months in Chinese prison、uh, before we sent back, and the American pastor he had to wait、uh, in the foreign prison in Yanji, China,、uh, for 13 months as well,、um, and he got sentenced. He repatriated to America, and we repatriated to North Korea. Oh my God! But the miracle happens from now. Which is after Pastor came to America, he shared all those stories、um, among the Korean American churches,、mm-hmm. and then、um, I was like 14 years old, and、um, I call him Grandpa,、mm-hmm. and、um, he always said like this young family, we need to rescue them.、Yeah. So a lot of people they donated and they made I think、um, ten thousand dollars at the time. Directly sent it to six officials who actually handles our paperwork,、mm-hmm. um, and then、uh, another five thousand was for other broker fees. So total, it was like a fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars is spent for our family,、wow. and the whole process, searching process and rescuing process took about four months. So it was very expedited rescue mission.、Mm-hmm. So when we were sent back to North Korea, they already started to searching us,、mm-hmm. and then once they found. Us, they change the paperwork. So whatever we tell them, they just write it down instead of torturing us and trying to find the truth.、Uh, so it was very easy going.、Wow. And after we submitted all the paperwork, they just took us with a different route for the transportation.、Um, so we was sitting in the little、uh, jeep car, and then we drove like a day or two to reach our hometown、mm-hmm. from Onsong to Musan area. And then we stayed in the local prison cell for about a week, and then we got released. So it was like miraculously happened.、Mm-hmm. And after we got released, we were so weak, and we tried to find find the、uh, soldier who willing to accept the offer.、Mm-hmm. And、um, a lot of、mm, communications happened, but there's a group of.、Uh, Pastor, Korean Chinese pastors who are waiting in China side,、mm-hmm. and we were working in North Korea side. And finally, the final day, the Chinese side they were waiting whole week at the border area because、mm-hmm. they don't know when we will cross、mm-hmm. the border.、Um, and then they thought that was the last day we're gonna wait here.、Mm-hmm. Um, and then that night we crossed the Tumen River and we walked like. Uh, unexplored mountain, so it was a lot of bushes、mm-hmm. there. So we don't know which direction we are going to. But finally, we reached the road, and there's one black 
a van was standing next to it, so we were observing it whether mm-hmm. someone is there or not. Yeah. But one Chinese um, Korean speaking person walked to us like, "Are you the family?" Yeah. Like, oh. Yes, we are. Wow. <laughs> so that was the moment we got uh, rescued, and we just drove like two and a half hours directly until we reached their house, <sighs> and we were finally found the safety. So. And, and so you just picked. A direction went up the mountain. Oh, there's the van. Yes. Then- <laughs> <laughs> so we we kind of uh, we well, I think my mom and my sister they had a one phone call say mm-hmm. we will wait on Go China this. side. Yeah. Um, so let us wow. cross the river, but it cut it keep delayed because the you know negotiation in North Korea, yeah. like how much money they want to get, so and so. Wow. But so then uh, from there, you, I mean, was it pretty quick that you then you came to the U.S., or was it some process after that? Well, um, the whole process begins right before we get caught. So we wrote our testimonies. Okay. Um, because with, with the moment when we decided to come, to come to America, we wrote a letter and gave it to Pastor Yoon. Okay. And then he said he de- is mailed to the State Department with our story at the time okay. and trying to process our document to come to America. Wow. So after we sent the letters, <clears throat> we got caught and imprisonment and all that. So that yeah. took about like whole two years, right? Um, and after we came back to China, at the time, the government already have our names and information. Mm-hmm. So it was much faster than oh, expected. Okay. Wow. Um, and after we come to China, we have to hide in the house. Uh, we cannot go out. Um, and some pastor's wives or pastor, they will stop by once a week to deliver the food. And after two months later, he just suddenly ran to our house and said, we have to leave now. Mm-hmm. Because he got the phone call from the broker from North Korea side. They called him and said, all these six officials, most of them, they got in trouble. They already got caught. So North Korean government is looking for our family right now. Oh, my God. Um, so they already sent the agents to the China side looking for that family. So you guys cannot stay in North North part. They have to run as soon as mm-hmm. possible. So when we get that news, we just packed everything, pop on the van, and we just drove to Beijing, China. And once we... During the process, it took a whole 17 hours driving. Mm-hmm. We were nonstop drive Mm -hmm. um after we get to beijing the pastor was communicating with the pastor yun and he also needed to communicate with the u.n office in the dc area Mm -hmm. and dc u.n office they have to communicate with the beijing uh, office and then after they had a communication they said okay we will accept you so since then we got protected by the u.n and um, they Mm -hmm. rented an apartment in beijing area and about 21 defectors were um, protected at the mm-hmm. time in that apartment. Wow. And then, and then eventually you made your way to the US. Yeah, about 15 months later. Wow. Um, yeah, it's just, it's sort of, it's hard to understand how, you know, in China, this, this can be happening where it's back and forth, back and forth, and then yet, um, you know, there's refugees, some are allowed, you know, and some not, as though it's a very unique experience for North Koreans. Right. Like, oh, there's only a few people that are dealing with this or something. Like, it's, no, I mean, it's <laughs> everywhere. I mean, yeah. c- could you, is there, and I want to, let's talk a little bit more about um, kind of some of the human rights violations. I mean, we've talked about a lot. I mean, this whole story is right. that. But are there, you were in a rural area. Is there differences for, you know, living in a city in punk, Pyongyang, uh, versus rural or how what what would you compare that how would you compare yeah that? so when i was in the prison we met some people from pyongyang as well and we train all day long only thing we can do is sharing stories and yeah. sharing our experiences so when we hear that um during the great famine pyongyang people were just uh, um starved and death uh, in Pyongyang as well, mm-hmm. because um, all those rations also stopped for Pyongyang yeah. people. It's uh, they gave some in certain group of mm-hmm. people, but not everybody. So people who cannot get the rations, they cannot 
allowed to do any business. They are not allowed to travel freely inside of Pyongyang. So basically, who lives in Pyongyang are suffered more than the rural area really? and wow. the mountain because they only can rely on the government support. Yeah. Um, and whoever lives in Pyongyang, which means they have connection with some government agents or mm -hmm. uh, workers, so they don't have any freedom to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. So their families, wives, they are not allowed to do business. So, uh, And also they don't have farming. Mm -hmm. So there's no other way to it's figure really out the really living. So just, wow. you know, government don't give you, then you will just die. Wow. So the so is <clears throat> so like pre before 1994 it, I mean all these violations were still there but maybe there's just a little bit more food. Is that the difference? Yes. So my <laughs> mother she always said, "Well, during the Kim Il Sung, we were given a lot of seafood, a lot of food, and sometimes uh, they gave a bunch of um uh uh, peach mm -hmm. so she could not finish all the peach so they have to put in the jar and make a you know like a peach juice or yeah. something and she, she has to finish all the peach until she was sick of a peach mm -hmm. um, and sometimes she got uh, provided by fish like a mm -hmm. tons of fish given to each village so they have to eat fish for mm -hmm. months so but the they couldn't find any other um, daily using products. Mm -hmm. For example, the clothing were very limited. Mm -hmm. And governments, they will give um, clothing one per family. Yeah. So my mom has to wear the same blue uh, sweater for whole four season. Uh, whether wow. go to school or for work, yeah. she has to wash it over and over again. Wow. Um, so her dream was to buy one new Korean traditional dress for her mother. Mm -hmm. And then after she worked in the factory for several months, she finally collected enough money to buy one dress for my mom, mm -hmm. my grandmother. So she she had to decide whether she want to buy multiple product for a whole family or she want to buy one dress for her mother wow. so those kind of difficulties she was facing but not the food situation but slowly toward to 1994 it was a little bit different mm -hmm. and uh, in 1994 completely the government stopped and then people were using the saved food mm -hmm. for certain year but when the saved you know, products and food were eaten, then there's no more support. So yeah. they start to die after several wow. years later. That's why from 1996 to 1998, so many people mm -hmm. died because there's no more saved food. Wow. So, I mean, so now, um, I mean, this is just, there's so many questions and there's so much more detail too that we could get into as far as torture and public execution. And I mean, uh, what what other sort of um, things do you want to make sure we mention that, that people are aware of as far as these human rights violations? Yeah, human rights violation is, is a very, um, a lot of different incidents mm -hmm. among the North Korean defectors. For example, when we uh, met those moms who have to get separated in China first. Um, I saw one little boy, he was really, really cute, and he was five years old, and he came into our prison cell with his mom together, but he only stayed three days, and three days, on the third day, he has to get separated with his mom mm -hmm. because his father is Chinese citizen. Mm -hmm. So we can hear his father was knocking the gigantic uh, iron door outside of the prison cell and keep mm -hmm. yelling and crying and knocking it. And then the mom was holding the baby and crying for oh, wow. two hours. Um, and then... Several hours later, one of the soldiers came in, just trapped the baby, and walked out. That's China side. Um, and also in Chinese prison cell, we were not able to use any hygiene products mm -hmm. because Chinese government, they were so... They also ang angry toward North Korean prison and mm -hmm. officers because they find out the North Korea side, they are not treating their Chinese citizen well. Mm -hmm. So when Chinese citizen got caught in North Korea, um, like, for example, 80 kilogram 
gigantic person、right. was detained. But after three months later, he became like a fifty kilogram. <laughs> So it was like、size. right. So、wow. when those officers saw that, they feel like, whoa, that country not treating my people well. Then、mm-hmm. I'm not treating well as、yeah. well. So they are not giving us any hygiene products or a good environment. So、wow. um, in Chinese prison, we were suffered a lot. And females, we have you know、uh, need monthly products. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are not giving it, so we have to、um, take off, rip off our、um, clothes to、wow. make that、uh, just just、All、survival, right?、Yeah. And that's kind of better. But after we get to North Korea side, even worse.、Mm-hmm. For example, woman、uh, oh, when we that was in China. <laughs> okay, that's just the beginning.、Wow. Uh, but once we get across the river and get into North Korea side. A lot of human rights abuses happens on the labor camp,、um, but of course in the prison cell we were only punished and sitting inside of the prison cell. But during the interview process, they got beaten、mm-hmm. and they got yelled.、Um, wow. I also got searched several times. Like the female、uh, officers, they're、uh, examining the bodies,、mm-hmm. like confirming whether I'm saying right age. Whether I'm not lying,、mm. and whether I'm pregnant or not, all those exams、mm. they're going through.、Uh, when North Korean females they get pregnant with a Chinese citizen、um, baby, they are forcefully either abortion, or、um, if they gave birth already, then、uh, most of the time they will just get killed right away. You're kidding me. Just buried、wow. under.、Um, Um, yesterday we were also sharing that during lunch hour. But one of the lady who's here, her、um, aunt's friend or、uh, her aunt's their family also、um, died by starvation and all that because her husband went to China and they were kicked out from the village and they were hiding in the little mountain、mm-hmm. hut、yeah. and they slowly died.、Um, Um, but my sister also shared one instant that when she got caught and she was about fifteen years old or sixteen years old at the time, and she was working so hard at the labor camp, it was farming. So it was a corn farm.、Um, I don't know how you, you whether you know. The root area, but the corn when we harvest it,、mm-hmm. it was like a three or four inch, and then it was very sharp、mm-hmm. because we were cutting.、Yeah. Um, so that lady was nine months pregnant,、mm-hmm. and she was about th- two months when she pregnant and sent back to North Korea. But、mm-hmm. whole process took so long, so she become nine months. But With nine months pregnancy, of course, it's a slow movement, and、mm-hmm. she was collecting corns and trying to cut it very slow. So、yeah. those officer walked to her and kind of, you know,、uh, rushing her,、mm-hmm. said like, "Hurry up, you're so slow." Blah blah blah.、Mm-hmm. And then、uh, he kicked her on her chest, but she just sit on that、uh, corn root.、Oh, wow. And then on that and、uh, that moment, she just delivered the premature baby.、Um, My sister said the younger girls were just pushed on the side, but she heard the baby crying.、Mm-hmm. But later she found out that baby was、um, just buried near near the、wow. uh, farm corner. So that's kind of <laughs> things.、Horrible. Yeah, these kind of things are happening in the in the in the prison cells and labor camps. So there's no human rights at all for those prisoners. So. Um, those are just one or two instances, but there are a lot, a lot of rapes happens、um, for the among young、uh, North Korean females.、Um, a lot of beating going on, and a lot of、uh, cursing words. All those psychological,、um, uh, you know, effects going on there.、Um, if you are not strong enough, you will get crazy right away. So that's the reality in North Korea. Now, one la-、uh, kind of in the closing, uh, what uh,、um, 
You mentioned that your father was turned in by other people in the village. Was it government officials or our neighbors literally just, I mean, turning people in? And what's the reason they would do that? Because in North Korean regime, um, they are trained to do so. Yeah. Uh, because every day, end of the day, they have a meeting in the cities or villages or um, in the in the several houses combined together as one group. So mm-hmm. they will have a meeting and they trying to find out problems. The someone who did it wrong, wow. and then one of the leaders in that group will collect all those information and report to the upper level. Wow. Um, so when someone find out someone did certain things or questionable or they know it's wrong, then they have to report to the government. Wow. If they are not doing so, they they will get trouble. Wow. So those things will get trained since they were young. So mm-hmm. there were, that's why uh, during uh, our testimony, I said that people were trained to criticize each other, mm-hmm. not you know expressing yeah. appreciation. Um, yeah, that's wow. what happened. So fast forwarding to today, well, uh, all of this is happening today. Um, this is the same story uh, from 20 years ago uh, up to today, and even worse, I think. Uh, well, I don't know how you get much worse than what you shared. I mean, that's just unimaginable evil um, with these human rights violations happening today in our world today. But you're over here in America. You've become a U.S. citizen. Um, maybe as we close, tell us what you're doing today, what you would like to see in the future for North Korea, for, for your, what are you dreaming about, those sorts of things. Sure. Um, well, one thing I can see uh, the change since my lifetime in North Korea and our family to nowadays is the information. Uh, since a lot of nonprofit organizations and defector group, they send so many information already into North Korea. So border area, a lot of young generation like my age or similar to my age, they already kind of knew that South Korea is rich and China is rich mm-hmm. and America is the richest country. Mm-hmm. But before, during 1998, not many people learned about that. Mm-hmm. At the time, we were still believing that South Korea is the poor, poorer than North Korea yeah. and China is um, uh, is also same and not mm-hmm. same, uh, not not better than North Korea yeah. condition. And America is the biggest enemy. But yeah. um, but nowadays, young generation they already knew the reality through the uh, the pop songs or through the Korean dramas. Information being smuggled right, in. Right, right. Through the smuggled in through the USBs wow. or balloons um, or the radios. They, they were able to receive it at least once in their life. Mm-hmm. So they kind of knew that. So they don't really glorify it to their leader anymore mm-hmm. inside of their mind wow. or inside of their heart. That's so that's change. the big change. That is right. Huge. So Juche ideology is kind of a shaking in that sense. Uh, but of course government is to uh, control everybody and they already know know if they say something wrong then they will get in trouble. Yeah. So they are like, you know, uh, careful it's about that. Cheering, yeah. Right. Um the, another update I heard is in modern days, people were able to buy the cell phone, but they are using intranet, which is um, only communicating inside of North Korea. So inside of North Korea, they can call each other with the smartphone if they are rich enough to buy it. Yeah. Um, so for among elites group, they are living similar life than Chinese citizens, mm-hmm. and they are using Chinese products a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but among those uh, people who are not able to afford it, they know and they are able to reach to those people and kind of giving a little bit and then watch those movies together, but they are keeping promises to each other. Mm-hmm. They are not sharing to the government. Mm-hmm. So that's a big change. They are not reporting to the government wow. anymore. Uh, yeah, and then um, the, what else should I, should I share? I kind of, cutting my brain now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and it's, so, so it sounds like things are turning at least at the people level, um, the, the people of North Korea. I mean, that's really what we've gotten, an understanding of the difficulties there, but the hearts and minds are starting to wake up or have woken up, and people are seeing that, well, there is something else, and this is not all there is. And you're, we're starting to see um, <clears throat> a lot of the, that opportunity coming in. And I know um, there's other changes happening. And if we had more time, we could 
we can even go into more of those details. But um, what about you? You're studying now. You're going to be going, is it interior design or what, what are you working to do towards? Yes, um, I really believe that America is a limited opportunity country. Um, so that's why I feel, I feel very grateful and thankful to America, except our family as refugees and welcome us and provide us a new home. Um, during my high school, I dreamed a different uh, career field. I was uh, dreaming to study about the international relations or the law or to become a dentist. I dreamed so many different options. Um, I tried the different options and got some working experiences. And then finally, I realized, ah, since I'm good at drawing and I love to draw, um, maybe I should pick in that field. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of worked and um, found interior design major as my future career. But I wanted to do something better and useful to, to my country. Mm -hmm. And I was keep thinking. And um, recently I thought, well, since North Korea is still residential houses or either commercial houses, it was very traditional and old style. They are only using the cement and then the red block for their construction. And nowadays they don't have enough material, so not many constructions going on in North Korea. So when one, one Korea or new Korea comes, I can bring the materials in and I can work with architecture uh, uh, firms or architects. We can build the whole city again with a new style or Western style as yeah. well. So um, that's why my dream is to build the new Korea with wow. my skill in the future. So you're uh, preparing yes. to return. <laughs> uh, like your mom said, don't forget. Uh, and you're going to return uh, when this new Korea happens, this one Korea uh, finally happens, and you're preparing now to do that. So. Yes, so no matter what kind of major or what kind of career I'm dream dreaming, I always want to connect with my country and my people and try to see what can I do in the future with my country people. So um, I think many other options are possible. So whoever get different careers or leadership, I think we all can find some uh, roles once mm -hmm. the new Korea comes. So not only my Myself, but other North Korean young mm -hmm. uh, generation should become the leader and take our responsibility. So when the chance comes, wonderful. Well, and I know you're already doing a lot to help uh, get the word out, help people know what's going on. I appreciate you spending more than an hour uh, with me. I know um, you've got a lot going on, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, is there any closing thoughts that you would want to share before we wrap up? Um, for closing words, I would like to ask uh, Western people, Western world, that North Korea is bad and socialism is crazy, uh, but people inside of North Korea is just ordinary, innocent people. And they are hungry to seeking the truth and they are hungry to seeking their origin God. Mm -hmm. So please pray for them. And uh, once they get freedom, they are just unlimited exponential uh, uh, can grow uh, in, in the Christian world and with the, with the great belief. So I saw many people, uh, they were so strong believers and they are crying for their families and they are praying every day and trying to help. So please pray for us. We are just ordinary people not just missiles or regime itself, but we are human being and brother and sisters in Christ. Thank you. Amen to that. Well, Amen. Grace, it has really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will be praying and just thinking about you and the people of North Korea. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, uh, if you look in the show notes and uh, you can find uh, where you can follow Grace Joe on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we'll have that in there for you. And uh, if you want to find past episodes of Your Faith at Work, visit RyanSHoward.com. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode, talking with Grace Joe. Thank you so much. God bless. We'll see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe and you can help spread the word by leaving a five-star review and sharing it with your friends. Visit RyanSHoward.com to learn more about living the intentional, influential, and impactful life you were created for.